The Tamma Teaching September 5th, 1979 The Tamma Teaching is the most perfect, flawless, and ideal teaching, unequaled by any other teaching in both the means and the end results. This is because the teacher is the Lord Buddha, who is the supreme embodiment of excellence that all sentient beings can take up as their role model and follow with their utmost ability. His diligence, endurance, resourcefulness, and the ability to discipline himself and his noble disciples rank above all other human beings. In striving, he kept on exerting himself until he accomplished his task. In enduring, he sometimes fell unconscious. But he never relented in his endeavoring, but excelled in every task until he became enlightened. His enlightenment made it possible for others to become enlightened as well. All they have to do is follow his Tamma teaching, which is suitable for the four distinct groups of his followers. Bhikkhus or monks, Bhikkhunis or nuns, Zamarneheras or novices, Ubazagas or laymen, and Ubazigas or laywomen. The term Zasada means supreme teacher, who is wise in the way of teaching. He knows what kind of Tamma is suitable for what type of person. He doesn't teach anything which is beyond the ability of his students to practice and achieve. Teaching monks differs from teaching lay people in the general public. However, he taught the lay people who practiced like the monks the same way he taught the monks, with tamma geared specifically to suit each individual practitioner's ability and attainment. He would explain until his students were fully satisfied and had their doubts cleared away. Apart from teaching human beings, he also taught the devatas, or spiritual beings. Have you seen any devata? Or... Is it a matter of choosing what you want to believe based on your opinion which is contaminated with the Gelesas, Danha, and Asava? There are internal and external phenomena, coarse and subtle. The phenomena that the Lord Buddha taught ranged from coarse to very subtle. There are coarse phenomena, such as visual objects, and there are very subtle phenomena like the spiritual beings that we have heard and read about from the scriptures. The three divisions of the Bali Canon, the Suttas or Discourses, the suttas or discourses, the vinaya or the monastic discipline, and the apitamma or higher tamma are all true. There isn't a single chapter or verse in the Bali Canon that is not true. Thus, it can't be said that some of the teachings of the Supreme Teacher are true and some are false. This is because the Lord Buddha teaches only the truth. If you are going to trust someone, you can completely trust the Lord Buddha. When the Lord Buddha taught the Devadas, he also instructed them in the Tamma suitable to their abilities and attainments, just like the way he taught human beings, because Tamma is universal. Whether it's a Brahma, an inhabitant of the non-sensual heavens of form or formlessness, a Devata, or a human being, they are just the Jitta with varying degrees of subtlety or coarseness. It's the Jitta that takes up these various forms of existence. Some life forms are less morally developed than others, such as animals. The Lord Buddha, therefore, couldn't teach the animals because they couldn't distinguish right from wrong, good from evil, heaven from hell, or the Kelesas, Dangha, and Asava. Although they are committing these deeds daily, they don't know the morals of their actions. But with human beings, they can distinguish and learn the various aspects of Tamma from the Pali Canon. Although not everyone is capable of doing this, there are some who can study and practice the Tamma from the three divisions of the Bali Canon, which contain the complete and faithful collection of the Lord Buddha's teaching. Everything in the Suttas, the Vinaya, and the Apitamma is true. It's the Chitta that will study, practice, and experience the Tamma. Whilst some Chittas can perceive various paranormal phenomena due to their ability of extrasensory perception, some Chittas can only perceive phenomena through the senses. For this reason, the Lord Buddha has to select the appropriate Tamma to teach each Jitta based on its ability and attainment. The Tamma teaching is therefore an ideal teaching for the world to follow in every aspect, such as the application of diligent effort, endurance, perseverance, austerity, thrift, mindfulness, resolve, discipline, and wisdom for mental development and mental stability. It is suitable for both the monks and the laity, because Tamma is a universal teaching that benefits everyone. As a monk, you should diligently practice for the elimination of the Gelesas, Danha, and Asava with the support of your endurance and perseverance. 
You should concentrate your satipanya to search for the kilesas which are deeply embedded within your chitta so that they can be totally eliminated. This task can be accomplished with persistent satipanya and diligent effort which a layman also can apply in his daily activity. It will make him calm, peaceful and stable, not drifting or making a mess. There is no other teaching as perfect and ideal as the Lord Buddha's teaching that will benefit the monks and the laity, especially the Tama practitioners who follow it faithfully. What did the Lord Buddha teach? What is a monk's duty? What is the purpose of going forth? These are the primary questions that you should ask. During the Lord Buddha's time, people went forth for the purpose of eliminating the Gelesas which are harmful to the Jitta and cause it to take up birth in the various realms of existence. It's in the jitta where you'll find good and evil, right and wrong, happiness and suffering. That's why the Lord Buddha taught you to dig deeply into your jitta, which is the most important object. When the body dies, it decomposes, but the jitta doesn't decompose. The jitta doesn't die, but you don't and won't know this unless you practice. That is why the Lord Buddha exhorted you to practice. What is the purpose of taking up the robe? It's for eliminating the Gelesas with the Tamma practice. What is the duty of a monk? During the Lord Buddha's time, a monk's duty was to practice walking and sitting meditation. If you're resolute in destroying the Gelesas due to your perception of the harm of the cycle of birth, death and rebirth, you have to develop Sati, Banya, Sadha and Virya to full potential. They must be developed concurrently. If the jitta is constantly nourished, how can it not develop? It will definitely grow and excel. The jittas of the Lord Buddha and his noble disciples were also immersed in the kilesas for a long time, like your jitta. Their kilesas and your kilesas are the same kilesas. How did they manage to get rid of their kilesas and achieve freedom from dukkha and become the world's refuge? The term buttang saranangatami, I take refuge in the Buddha, doesn't refer to just the Buddha of our era, it refers to all the Buddhas who became enlightened and taught Tamma to the world. The term Tammang Saranangatami, I take refuge in the Tamma, refers to the absolute truth discovered by all the Buddhas. Tamma is the natural principle that has always existed since time immemorial. The term Sankhang Saranangatami, I take refuge in the Sankha, refers not only to the noble disciples of our era, but to all the noble disciples of all eras who have risen from the cesspool of the Gilesas, Tanha, and Asava. How did they manage to cleanse themselves to become noble ones and refuges for all sentient beings? It was due to their diligent effort. There are four essential mental faculties that the Lord Buddha exhorted you to develop. The first is chanda, which is delight or taking pleasure in your duty of eliminating the kilesas. Virya is persistence or diligence. Whether it is a physical or mental task, there must always be diligent effort and perseverance. Jitta is attentiveness, being observant of your task. If you pay close attention to your task, it will flow smoothly and flawlessly. Vimangsa is extremely important because it is banya. You must be thorough and circumspect with your task, physical or mental, and especially with the practice of mental development. You have to develop banya to its fullest potential by always contemplating the three characteristics of all phenomena, which are anitzang, dukkang, and anatta. You must see them in this light in order to release your attachments, or upadana, which are deeply embedded within your jitta, and you must liberate your jitta from dukkha. Therefore, these four mental faculties are absolutely vital. You must not be heedless, but must always be vigilant and mindful. You should never think that the Gilesas and you will ever be good friends. They are like fire. Can you get intimate with fire? If you really investigate, you'll see that they are like fire. That is why the Lord Buddha called them Ragagna, Dosagna, and Mohagna, or the fires of lust, hatred, and delusion. If they are not harmful, why would he call them fire? The Lord Buddha never lied nor exaggerated. He only spoke the truth. The problem with you is that you never look at the truth, but always deny the truth unknowingly. This is the work of the Gilesas, which is similar to fire. When you touch the fire, knowingly or not, it will burn you. That is why you have to be very careful and must not expose yourself to the Gilesas, because they are your enemy and they are like fire. 
Wherever you are, whether you're standing, sitting, walking, or lying down, you must always meditate and establish mindfulness because it's your duty. You have to take the Buddha, Tamma, and Sangha as your refuge. Ultimately, you have to put your life at stake for the freedom from all Dukkha. This is your undertaking. You are abundantly provided with the requisites of living by the lay devotees who have faith in your endeavor and hope to make merit by supporting you. You are not lacking any of these requisites. What is lacking is your resolve and commitment to fight and eliminate the Gelesas, Tanha, and Asava. After you've accomplished your mission, you can then teach others. This is the most important point. If you can't teach yourself, how can you teach others? When you are not yet enlightened, your teaching won't be comprehensive and true. You should only teach after you've become enlightened. Then every aspect of your teaching will be true, and your students will really benefit. This is the way of Tamma which has never done anybody any harm. It's the Gilesas that harm everybody. That's why you have to concentrate all your efforts to destroy them. Whether you're standing, sitting, walking, or lying down, you should always establish mindfulness. Be vigilant and mindful. Sati or mindfulness is crucial for your Tamma practice. You need Sati to direct your investigation with Banya. Sati and Banya must always work together as a team. The greatness of the Lord Buddha is due to his ability to reveal to others the supreme Tamma. So when he teaches this Tamma to the world, the world finds it to be priceless. However, when this Tamma is heard by immoral listeners, it will appear worthless. You must therefore prepare yourself to be a proper vessel to receive the Lord Buddha's Tamma by developing Sila, morality, Samadhi, mental stability, and Banya, wisdom, until achieving enlightenment and Vimutti, freedom from Dukkha. You'll then become truly great without the need to have someone to vouch for you. How can you not become truly great after you have acquired this supreme Tamma? How can your jitta, which is always agitated, restless, and confused, find any peace and happiness? It's because the Gilesas keep manipulating it to see only trials and tribulations rather than peace and harmony. To you the world appears gloomy and bleak, when in fact it's not so. This is due to your delusion, and that is why it is necessary for you to develop your sati and banya so that you can become wise and intelligent. You should establish samadhi, which is your jitta's foundation, and should earnestly and mindfully develop samadhi with the method that is most effective for you. The tamma is a serious teaching. The Lord Buddha took the tamma very seriously. So why are you fooling around? Is this the way to follow the Lord Buddha? The Lord Buddha seriously practiced and became enlightened. If you playfully practice, you will become foolish. You'll never become enlightened. All that you will acquire are more delusions and deceptions. If you earnestly practice, you'll definitely achieve results. Samadhi isn't beyond your ability. It's the Gilesas that agitate your jitta by manipulating and inciting it. Therefore, it is necessary to concentrate your sati, banya, sadha, and viriya right at the jitta and practice relentlessly. How then can your jitta become agitated? Sati must force the jitta to totally concentrate on the task at hand and forget about everything else, such as life, death, and time. You should only be aware of what you're doing, like repeating a mantra or watching your breath. Don't let your jitta think about other things that will agitate it, which will happen if you're absent-minded. You should pretend that at this moment the world doesn't exist, although it actually does exist, by not thinking about it. Let there be only the jitta and the meditation object. Then the jitta will stay put and will definitely become calm. I have experienced this before. I'm not bragging. I have never seen any undertaking to be as difficult as the practice of mental development. From the start when I tried to establish some calm and tranquility, I found the jitta to be a lot more restless and agitated than a monkey due to the influence of the gilesas over the jitta. I had to replace the gilesas with the tamma so that the tamma can become the jitta's master, and had to concentrate all my efforts into the practice, sometimes putting my life at stake. If I was going to die, so be it. Having been born, I am destined to die. The same with everybody, whether he or she practices or not. Nobody is exempted from the cemetery. Who can live forever in this world? If I had to die fighting the Gilesas, I was ready. It was either I die or become enlightened. When my practice started to home in on the Gilesas, I was able to subdue the Gilesas and establish calm, as well as making the jitta bright and cool. 
It was an incredibly amazing and wonderful experience that enormously enhanced my faith in the Tamma teaching, as well as my diligence, forbearance, and perseverance to fight and completely vanquish the Kilesas. This is how it will be when you really exert yourself. When it is time to make the jitta go into samadhi, you must solely concentrate on developing samadhi. Don't develop banya at this time. When you want to establish calm, you must do only that. If you want to use banya to develop samadhi, then you must investigate the body. This is called going on a gammartana sightseeing trip. The term gammartana means the basis of action or task. The most suitable objects for this task are the 32 parts of the body. If you investigate the body, going from top to bottom, having sati or mindfulness directing your investigation, the jitta will eventually become still. This is one way to develop samadhi. Now let me tell you how to develop banya. When the jitta has gained enough calm, it will be contented, not hankering for anything. You have to direct this calm jitta to investigate the various aspects of tamma, like the 32 parts of the body. You should investigate your body as well as other people's bodies. You should look for partikula, filthiness, or anitsang dukkang and anatta, because they are the truth. We all know how filthy the body is. The Lord Buddha did not lie to us, but the gilesas prevent us from seeing the body's filthiness. They are the masters of deception. Is there a person in this body? Look carefully. You have to look the way the Lord Buddha instructs you to look. Is there beauty in this body? It's actually full of filth inside and outside. It's also full of anitang, dukkang, and anatta. But this isn't the picture the Gelezas have drawn up, which portrays the body to be beautiful, good-looking, and to be I and mine, which contradicts the Tamma teaching. The Gelezas always contradict the Tamma teaching. If your thinking and understanding are like this, then you're contradicting the Tamma. You must turn around your understanding to conform with the Tamma by seeing the body as filthy or batikula. You must investigate until you see the truth of this filthiness. Then it can be said that you are seeing the truth. You should also investigate the body to see it as a nitang, impermanence, dukkang, suffering, and anatta, the negation of an entity, self, or person in this body, which is just made up of the four elements of earth, water, air, and fire. For truly there is no such thing as a self, an animal, or a human being. This is the truth. When you see this truth, the gilesas will disappear from your jitta. Your delusion will gradually disappear as the truth gradually appears. First you'll see the truth of Partikula, then you'll see the truth of the four elements. When the body is just elements, how can you be attached to it? If the body isn't good-looking, how can you be attached to it? It's like excrement along the roadside. Who would dare step on a pile of excrement? This is how you should see the body in order to free your jitta from this delusion. The jitta will stay clear from the body like you stay clear from a pile of excrement. These are the means of removing the kilesas which are like thorns that irritate and annoy your jitta and prevent you from having any peace and happiness. Although you may think that you are practicing mental development or pawana, actually you are most of the time making yourself restless and agitated by doing something else. The time when you have any sati or mindfulness is only brief, but the time when you don't have any mindfulness and are being dragged away by the gilesas to do something else must be at least 95% of the time. So how are you going to find any tranquility, happiness, and coolness when 95% of the time belongs to the gilesas and only 5% belongs to the tamma? Is this enough to oppose the gilesas? You must therefore develop sati and banya to a very high level. You have to be really earnest with your investigation of the body so that you can see its true nature with your own method of investigation. You must not be lazy when it's time for you to develop banya and just wait for your teacher's advice or expect him to show you all the details of practice. The teacher will only point out the major points. You have to come up with the details using your own zati and banya. Whatever methods of investigation you've devised will be your genuine possession. When you investigate, you will truly see the body's true nature and will eliminate your delusion. The more you truly see, the more your delusion will disappear. When you have completely seen the body's true nature, your attachment to and delusion of the body will be uprooted. The jitta will then come inside. 
This is the investigation of the body. You have to investigate it so that you can see its true nature very clearly. You can investigate your own body or someone else's body. They are the same as long as you investigate for the purpose of uprooting your delusion and for insight. It will always be correct because it's Magga, the path. But when you incorrectly investigate your own body or someone else's body, it will be harmful to you. The purpose of your investigation is really crucial. Samma Dirti, right views, and Samma Sangkapo, right thoughts, are the components of Banya, which is the Lord Buddha's teaching that is designed for the elimination of the Kilesas, attachments, and delusions. When you are skillful in your investigation with Banya of both your own body and other people's bodies, you'll not be deluded by them. So how can the Jitta become attached to them? The reason why the Jitta is attached to them is because it is deluded. It doesn't see the body's true nature. Even after you've listened to your teacher, it will be merely imagination. Your jitta hasn't yet seen the truth. In other words, the truth hasn't yet penetrated the jitta. The only way to experience the truth is to practice mental development. The results that appear will be true knowledge and true insight that will enable the jitta to let go. Whatever object you're attached to, for example your body, after you've seen its true nature, you'll let go of it. After you have realized the truth of your body, and you, are and you are clearly impressed by the truth of the elements, the truth of Bhartikula, and the truth of Anitang, Dukkang, and Anatta, your jitta will definitely let go of the attachment to your body. You'll clearly see this without having to ask anybody about it. You'll see the harm of your attachment, and how oppressive and burdensome this attachment has been for you. How then can your jitta not relinquish your body? It will definitely let go. Your attachment to your body is now neutralized by your banya and investigation. Your jitta will now come inside because it has relinquished your body. You're now liberated from your attachment to your body. Your next targets of investigation are Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna, the four Namakantas, or the four mental aggregates. There are three kinds of Vedana or feelings good, bad, and neutral feelings Sukha, Dukkha, and Upekha Vedana which are in the body and the jitta. Sanya is memory or recognition. Sankara is thinking about all sorts of things past, future, and present. Vinyarna receives or acknowledges the sense data, like when the visual objects come into contact with the eyes and the sounds come into contact with the ears. When these sense objects disappear, the acknowledgement also disappears. This is Vinyarna. They are merely mental phenomena. There is no self or essence in them, Vedana is just Vedana, Sukha is just Sukha, Dukkha is just Dukkha, and neutral feeling is just neutral feeling. There is really no essence in them, they are just phenomena. When you've investigated up to this point, how can your jitta not see the truth? It's your deluded jitta that keeps thinking that Dukkha Vedana is harmful because it's used to thinking in this manner and making itself miserable. When you've investigated with Banya these three Vedanas, Sukha, Dukkha, and Neutral, you'll see that they are Anitsang, Dukkhang, and Anatta. It's the same with Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna. You'll relinquish them, just like you did the body. You'll no longer have any attachment for any body or any feeling, good, bad, or neutral, with the exception of those feelings in the Jitta that you haven't yet relinquished, which are also good, bad, and neutral feelings. Sanya is memory or recognition. Sankara is thinking, which continually rises and ceases, like flashes of lightning. Vinyarna also rises and ceases. It rises just so that it can cease. It doesn't rise for any other purpose, and not for any entity, self, people, or animals. It just rises and ceases. What essence is there in any of them? When you've seen their true nature, you'll relinquish them. You'll let go of Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna, which are merely mental phenomena and are not the jitta. Although they might appear in the jitta, they aren't the same thing. Like men and women who live together, yet you can tell them apart. You'll know beyond any doubt that Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna are not the jitta. This is the knowledge that arises from practice, but you have to investigate in the manner that has been discussed here. When you've let go of them, there won't be any attachments left. Destroyed are the paths used by the Gilesas, which are the chief culprits that are deeply embedded in the Jitta. There is now no way for the Gilesas to come out of the Jitta, because they can no longer use Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna as their paths. 
Neither can they use visual objects, sounds, smells, tastes, and touch, for they have all been destroyed by Banya. Now you can see very clearly that within the Chitta there is just the Chitta and the Gilesas. The Gilesas are no longer attached to Ropa, Vaidana, Zanya, Zankara, or Vinyarna. They used to hide behind these five Kantas, claiming them as I and mine. When Sati and Banya have finally rounded up the Gilesas into the Chitta, the Jitta must now be the investigation target for Sati and Banya. You no longer have anything to do with Ropa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna. However, you still have to use the arising and ceasing of Sankara as the means of getting to the genuine Gilesa, which is Avidda. At this point, the knowingness will stand out prominently from the Kantas. You'll see this very clearly. This is the time when you'll really get to know the Jitta. Although Avidda is in the Chitta, you won't know it, because Avidda is very subtle, smart, and clever. When you first get to this stage, you won't know that this is Avidda if you don't have an enlightened teacher to point Avidda out for you. You'll think it's a genuine gold bar when in fact it is not. You'll now become enamored with this Jitta, which has converged to become extremely bright and magnificent. After you've let go of everything else, you now become attached to the jitta and think that the jitta is all alone by itself, not knowing that there is a tiger lurking inside it. This tiger is avidda. Even the automatic sati and banya or maha sati and maha banya can still be deceived by avidda's charms because avidda is the king of the three realms of existence. There isn't a single kind of gilesa that can be more subtle and clever than avidda. The coarser manifestations of Avidda are the Gilesas of Lopha, Dosa, and Moha, greed, hatred, and delusion. Even with these coarser kinds of Gilesas, you can be deceived by them. If you were not deceived by them, how could you become so greedy, so hateful, so deluded? This is because you think they are valuable and a natural part of you. For this reason, they are all over the world of Sansara. If you know how dangerous and harmful they are to you, then what is the use of being greedy, hateful, and deluded? It's the same with the jitta that is being deceived by itself. This deception is on the most subtle level. It is therefore necessary to use banya to investigate this phenomenon, in the same way that you investigated Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyarna to see their true nature. You have to observe its activity or movement. If it is Sammati, even at the most subtle level, there will still be activity. This activity will expose the very subtle characteristics of Anitzang, Dukkang, and Anatta of this very subtle phenomenon. You have to keep on investigating with Sati and Banya until you fully and clearly see its true nature. When you do, this phenomenon will be completely destroyed. There will be nothing left behind, including the Jitta's magnificent brightness, bravery, obsession, and attachment. All that remains is the natural knowingness, which is different from the knowingness tainted by Avidda. They are as different from one another as the sky is from the earth or stones from diamonds. This will be the final result of your practice. This is the ultimate freedom and the total destruction of the Gilesas, the cause of suffering, birth, aging, illness, and death in the various realms of existences. But it's Gamma that causes you to be born in a higher or a lower realm and to have happiness or sadness. Avidda is the primary cause, and Gamma is the secondary one. Avidda incites you to make Gamma. Once you have done Gamma, you'll have to bear the results of Gamma, called Gamma Vibhaka. These are the causes of ceaseless rounds of birth, death, rebirth, and suffering. Like the Lord Buddha and all the Savakas, you have to probe and analyze the Jitta, because it's the one that takes up birth, aging, illness, and death. Why do you have to wait for them to reveal this truth and teach it to you? Why are you not capable of learning it yourself? If you don't believe in them, who else can you believe in? If you only believe in yourself, you'll remain sinking in the pool of Dukkha. When will you ever transcend this pool of Dukkha that has birth, aging, illness, and death as its cause? If you don't believe the Lord Buddha, who else can you believe? You have to believe in Him by doing the investigation. You will then see clearly the Jitta's involvement with the past and the future, and with all the things that caused you to take up birth, aging, illness, and death in the various realms of existence. 
Even if you take up birth in the higher realms of existence, it's still an existence. It's still samati, or relative truth, that has dukkha embedded within it. The intensity of this dukkha corresponds to the realm of existence. You have to eradicate avidda, the real creator of existence, from the citta with the power of sati and panya. You have to completely eliminate it. Then you'll see for yourself whether you'll have to take up birth and die again or not. You will know this. How did the Lord Buddha get to know it? He got to know it by practicing mental development, not by memorizing the scriptures. He became enlightened by practice. You have to practice until you truly see and know of it. Da. Then it will be permanently destroyed. How then can there be any more birth or existence when the principal cause of birth has been totally destroyed, as you can see it very clearly with Banya? There is nothing more left behind. All that is left is the purified jitta. You will also know that you haven't disappeared. How can you disappear when you know? This is a natural principle. This purified jitta is the absolute truth. How can you annihilate the purified jitta? This is merely speculation. You have to see this absolute truth yourself. The Lord Buddha could teach this absolute truth because he had discovered it. It's not beyond the ability of your jitta to also discover this absolute truth. You have to probe and search until you find it. When you do, all of your trials and tribulations will completely vanish. The questions concerning your future, what kind of birth you'll take up, good or bad, will all disappear. As for the present, you know at all times what it is like. You know there isn't any attachment left because all the gilesas have been entirely eliminated. The purified jitta is not attached to itself because there are no gilesas left in it. If the jitta still has gilesas, it will still have attachment. The intensity of attachment corresponds to the intensity of the gilesas, which will always create attachment. If they are still in the jitta, they'll cause the jitta to attach to itself. When you have completely eliminated them from the jitta, there will be no attachment left. What is left is the purified jitta, which is permanently freed from all forms of attachment. This is Sandirtiko, or visible here and now, that is constantly challenging you to experience it from the day of the Lord Buddha's enlightenment to the present. The Tamma is never outdated. It is the Madhima Bhadibhada, the middle way or the right path to enlightenment, beginning with Samma Dirti and ending with Samma Samati. It is Sandirtiko, or self evident. You'll see it yourself because it's inside your jitta, and the way to achieve this has already been taught by the Lord Buddha and his noble disciples. This is the core of the Tamma teaching, the core of practice. You have to practice following this Tamma teaching, which the Lord Buddha called the Magga, the path to enlightenment, the tool to permanently eliminate Dukkha and the Gilesas. You must really exert yourself in your practice and must not relent or be lazy like a pig. The Lord Buddha didn't teach the pigs and the Tamma teaching is not pig's feed. The Lord Buddha had to go through fire and hell to become enlightened. He taught the Tamma so that others could also become enlightened. You should therefore faithfully follow the Tamma teaching and totally commit yourself to the practice to see if it's true or not. That's all you have to do. The Kilesas are sharp and clever. Nothing in this world can be sharper and more clever than the Kilesas, but when they dominate you, they make you foolish. That is why they are the world's rulers. It's the Gilesas that rule the Varta Jagga, or the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. Don't ever think that it's something else. If you want to see this clearly, you have to dig into your jitta in the way that I have just told you. You'll see it in your jitta. After the Gilesas have been eliminated from your jitta, who will be the ruler? There will be no ruler because you've realized absolute freedom. Please, be resolute and earnest with your practice.